Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to the Planetary Pool over here at Big Planet Comics. I'm your host, H. Happy New Year to you all. Sorry we haven't been here in the past couple of weeks, but you know things tend to slow down around the holidays. But we are here at the right day at the right time because you all know what's coming out this week. We'll get to it in a moment. But before we get to the big book of the, of the week, probably the month, I just want to make two quick announcements. One is Pop Culture Uncovered and Big Planet Comics will be looking to set up a book club here. We want to do something monthly, and um, if you want to get any more information, just contact me at pcupress at gmail.com. Um, especially if you're local, we'll work out time, date, and things like that. So, that's that. The other thing is, February the 4th, which is Wednesday, um, George O'Connell, or, yeah, O'Connor, excuse me, has been working on Olympians, Aphrodite, and several other books. He will be here at this store doing a sighting. So, if you guys want to come in, say hi, get your book signed, get it done. All right, so what do we have on tap? First up, as I've always said a lot, Injustice, Gods Among Us, number seven. Very unsung book in the DC uh, universe. You know, everything's always New 52, but of course, because this doesn't take place in a normal uh, DC timeline, um, this has been a very excellent book. This particular book is, is definitely a what if of the what if. So already the premise of, premise of Injustice is what if Superman went berserk and took over the world. So that's always been the ongoing thing. This one is a what if as, okay, what if a certain person was knocked out of the way and prevented Superman from doing everything that happened? Uh, what would happen to his children? What would happen to the world? How could things be any more different than it already is? Um, this was an excellent issue, um, just showing just that light light. You know, if you took a right instead of a left, what would you get? Very good book, Injustice number seven. Need to check that out if you're not already doing so. Next up, Conan and Red Sonia by Jim Sub and Gail Simone. Very excellent book. Um, taking a look at the very early exploits of uh, Conan and Red Sonia. This looks to be an ongoing, um, but the main thing about this book is uh, Sonia and Conan are breaking into a palace to steal what they thought of some jewels and they get a little bit more than they bargained for um, but what was very good was the dialogue in between them you can tell it's like the early days very gritty art um, very good fight sequences I really enjoyed this first issue um, and we're talking about Jim Zub the guy who is also doing uh, Legends of Baldur's Gate and of course Gail Simone who's doing Red Simone I mean excuse me Red Sony so you put them two together one book you get this there's more to come. Uh, watch out for the blood spores. Very good book. And while we're on the subject of swords and sandals, we got Tess Fowler and Curtis Weeb on Rat Queens. And this is like a one-off book uh, talking about one of the characters, Braga. Um, I was really, really, really impressed with um, Tess Fowler's work uh, telling the story about um, how Braga came to be um, being um, a part of the, the uh, orc lifestyle and trying to move past being a warlike orc and trying to move towards peace and, and of course being expelled from his community because of it and you know we find out how Braga comes along. Um, I did have one very good question at the end that I want to pass on to Kurt Weeb because uh, things kind of happened and I'm like uh, dude you kind of threw me a curveball so <laughs> I'm going to make sure I get in contact with Kurt, ask the question, see if I can get an answer to it. But other than that, this is a very excellent issue that's going to make it go, huh, at the end. And also, make sure you read to the very last covers because you will find out who the new artist will be, starting with Rat Queens number 9 coming out in February. So, now, last but not least, you guys want to know, how is it? Is it any good? Should I be getting it? Well... I'm going to mess with you guys for a little bit. I'm just going to show you some of the covers that we've gotten in so far. We've got this cover. we got this cover. Oh, let me just, just pick them all up and just, just show you. We, we have this one. This one. Uh, one of the main ones everyone's chasing after the, the, the uh, Alex Ross cover. Scotty Young. Got this cover. Got the action figure cover. One of my favorites. This one. Now, wonder if anybody knows what issue and the name of the rabbit that appeared on this cover.
from, oh, it's been almost 40 years. Send us an email, let us, let us know. We got this cover. We have this cover. And I could just go on and on and on and on with these covers, but by the time I finish this statement, I will be fresh out of covers. And that's like what? That was that was like what? 20 covers, Peter? And there's like about another 60 out there or something like that? Yeah. It's a lot of Star Wars covers out there. I got about five or six sitting on deck. I plan on being broke this week, but very, very happy. But I'm also happy to tell you guys, issue number one. Whew. Jason Aaron, John Cassidy, thank you. You guys really knocked it out of the park. And um, quite frankly, I mean, if you've you read any of the um, Jason Aaron works, such as Southern Bastards and the work that he's done on Thor, this book's going to be in good hands. If, if they can, if they can keep him, keep him around for at least 12 issues, this series will be in good hands. Um, similar to the Brian Wood run, this picks up right after the destruction of Yavin. Um, it's still in the early days of, of the rebellion and the one great thing that I think made a big difference with this book as opposed to Brian Wood's run and not knocking anything about, about his run, but Cassidy's art, it, it, it's, it's right there. It nails the look and the feel right on. He, he has the characters down to a T. So it's like even opening the book, you, you feel like that you want to hear the, the theme music somewhere. So. The main plot of the story is um, Leia, Han, and Luke are breaking into an Imperial facility. They get a lot more than they bargain for. And it, it I, I don't necessarily want to say an episode is what it feels like, but I mean, if, if there was a show, this definitely would be a good episode because you, you get left with a great cliffhanger like, okay, we, we've gone in, we've done what we had to do. Um, we made a left turn, we, we should have gone right. Alarms are going off. Um, of course, Darth Vader shows up. We got to get out. So it leaves you on a cliffhanger of how will the Rebels escape? And I can tell you guys like this, as opposed to the Marvel run of 30 some odd years ago, this book is really on point. You will enjoy this book if you're a Star Wars fan. Um, and then of course you get a couple of little extras at the end with um, a preview of Darth Vader and a preview of um, Princess Leia. Me personally, I'm really looking forward towards the, the Darth Vader book, but this right here, this is something that we've waited for for a while. Um, again, big ups to Brian Wood, but definitely Jason Aaron, you're picking up right where Wood left off. I'm good for it, I'm happy, and suffice to say, anybody that, that um, is, in, is, in, is in anticipation for tomorrow will be very satisfied pick up Star Wars, get as many covers as you think you can find. I think this will be very, very worth it. Other than that, I want to say uh, thank you guys for tuning in. You now got the skinny on whether or not Star Wars is any good. Two thumbs up. We'll see you guys next week. And we're out.